Today, we're starting the teardown of our six liter. Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. We are going to tear down our six liter so we can start building it and getting it ready. And I know what you're saying. Right off the bat, you're like, yo, yo, Kyle, that Chevy orange, not old gold. You're correct. So let me tell you what's going on here so you have an understanding of where we're at. I am waiting on so many parts for the 442. Uh, a lot of sheet metals back ordered, has been back ordered for three or four, probably almost five months now so because of that we're pivoting we're putting the six liter in the corvette we're going to go ahead and ls swap it and i've got probably 99 percent of the stuff that i need to do the swap but first things first we got to tear this thing down i've not even drained the oil out of it i'm sure i'm going to make a huge mess during this process because you know i don't have one of those fancy things that holds your oil pan so i'm going to kind of do one of these things We'll drain the oil down, pull the heads off, look at the cylinder walls. Hopefully everything looks good there because I really don't want to have to tear this down and pull the pistons out because once you get to that point, then it starts to snowball and you start spending more and more money. We're, we're looking at a semi-budget build on this. You know, we're going to put a stage three camshaft in it from BTR, make decent power. It should be in, you know, the low 400s uh, whenever we're all said and done not looking to make a serious power because i'll be honest with the 327 in the corvette right now it's already very 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 quick and giving it uh the ability to go up to like 6,000, 6,500 is going to make it super scary quick the car is it's it can be a little scary already so let's get to tearing this thing down i am going to use two buckets i've got a bucket for keep and a bucket for get rid of so as we tear things down, you'll see me throw things in the bucket. The keep bucket may not even be keep for this build. It may be keep just because it's stuff I may want to use later on. But a lot of this stuff, I'm just getting rid of. Like these heads, these iron heads, they're going to the recycling bin, things like that. So I'm going to try and find a decent position to set this camera up so you guys can see what is going on while we do this process. And let's... Get started. It's been a while since we've done some time lapse, so how about we do some time lapse? Okay, so the oil is dark, but doesn't look bad. It's flowing slow. It's really cold in here, so it is going to be a little slow. But other than that, it's coming out. That's a good sign. It's not uh, milkshake. We didn't get water. We would have got water first if there's water in the pan. So that means it's sealed up pretty good. Everything's looking good as far as that goes. Rest assured at some point in time today, I'll probably kick that oil pan off of the stand and get oil everywhere. So we are going to reuse our valve covers. We're going to clean them up and paint them. Uh, I'm going to be running covers on top of the covers. Uh, the type that covers up the coils, I'll show you more about that. There's a reason behind that, but this is, these will be saved, cleaned up, refurbished, and used again. I may have just finally killed my Harbor Freight ratchet there, so let me go get a real breaker bar. Eh, it just sounds like it just skipped some teeth. Lucky you can hear Han Solo just barking his ass off in the background. Oh no, we're fine. It was just the uh, bolt. Knowing all the intake valves means I can go ahead and clean crap like this up and not worry about anything getting down in the motor. 
I'll blow it off before I pull the head just to make sure, but I can go ahead and get these bolts ready to come out and not have to fight getting stuff in there and be paranoid and all kinds of fun stuff. Make life a little bit easier. Okay. Overall, on this side, we're not looking bad. All the bores look pretty good. I haven't rotated to look at that one because da, 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 we got one cylinder with water in it. So we'll get that dried out and cleaned out. Rub it down, see how bad it is underneath there. That's a bummer, but may still be savable. Hopefully it hasn't been sitting too long. We'll just have to wait and see. And I didn't see anything on the head gasket. Let's look at it again. Would have been this way. Yeah, I don't see anywhere where the water's pushed through the head gasket. So must have had a valve open at one point in time that allowed water in. Okay, it's not that bad. No water got past the rings. Uh, you can see exactly where the piston was at. I just got done spraying some PV blaster in there and kind of wiping it down, but there's a little bit of roughness in there. But I don't know. What's your thoughts? What do you guys think? Well, our knock sensor answered a question for us after we proceeded to dump about a gallon of dirt down the motor. Not a big ordeal, because uh, we're replacing the cam and all that jazz, but, you know, we might as well at least pull the pistons out, throw a dangle ball hole in, clean them up, clean up the bores, uh, maybe throw new rings on it, and then, yeah, just give it a, a nice clean up. Hopefully we can get away with just leaving the crank in the block while we do that. We'll see how much this dirt actually got down to it. Shouldn't be much, shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so a few of the lifters had some wear on them. Uh, probably four or five of them. You can kind of see which lobes that they were on. This one, I think that one, definitely that one. If you've ever wondered, this is your uh, cam signal for a 1X. So you've got a high and a low there. That's why it's on the back of these Gen 3 motors, but I mean, overall, none of the lobes are wiped out. Everything looks decent. I guess this thing had at least 100,000 miles on it. Well, luckily the GoPro shut off in the middle of that, so I don't know if you saw the camera or not. But as I was saying, it looks to be in pretty good condition. Uh, you know, for a vehicle, it probably had 120,000 miles or so on it. Uh, some of the lifters had some slight scoring, so they were going to need to replace it anyways. So I'm glad that we took a look at those. Now let's pull the pan off here. And I apologize for Han Solo barking all day, if you can hear him. There he is. We'll be going in with a new uh, pickup because we're going with a Camaro style oil pan that'll fit the cross member of our Corvette. The majority of the stuff uh, we got from ICT billet as usual. Okay, my camera keeps on dying, but I went ahead and pulled the slugs out. Uh, overall, good. We did have one bearing on number five that looked like it may have been spun. Uh, but looking at the crank, I'm not seeing any indications that it spun. So I will say that all of them were pretty loose. They're pretty worn. So, but the crank feels good. 
I think we'll just uh, get some new uh, bearings for the for the pistons. Get the pistons cleaned up. I'll throw them in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and clean all of them. We'll put new bearings and rings on it, and we'll just send it. We'll go ahead and dingle ball hone out the cylinder bores. I got to double check to see if I still have my six liter dingle ball holding woods. It's four. Uh, four inch bore or whatever. I should have one. If I don't, I'll get one on order. We'll go ahead and niggle ball it out. Don't look at the bottom side of my paint job. It's ugly. Uh, and then we'll get this thing put back together. While we're waiting on all that, though, we'll go ahead and start working on getting the heads assembled this weekend, uh, putting all the valves back in, stuff like that, get those ready. And hopefully by next weekend, we can have this thing assembled and ready to go back together. So... That's it, hopefully too much of it didn't get cut off by the camera, just decided to shut itself off. I have a sneaking suspicion it was overheating. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, as always hit up the comments down below. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that now. Helps out the channel, you, you know the drill. Come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. Okay, I'm gonna get back to it, you guys. Know what's going on. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.